Hey guys, just to let you know, we'll give it a couple more minutes and then we'll get started. All right. Good evening. Yep. Hello. Hi, it's Kelly. Hi, Kelly. Good to hear you. Good to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, David. Let me see, are you still muted? Hello. Yeah, I'm yeah. Kelly okay, I'm muted. Gonna turn my volume up. There, is that a little better? I can hear you. Okay, great. We're going to go ahead and get started and everybody else can join us when we get there. What I thought we'd do tonight is talk a little bit about messaging and how we see flyers, posts from social media and whatnot, and how we can work on them, maybe to make them a little different as far as visuals, so that way people can actually pick them up uh, and read them and want to come to our clubs. Uh, just so that you know, I'm also, so let me make sure this is being recorded, should be. Yep, it's recording. Uh, just to let you know, I'm also working on getting together a panel of two to three, no more than four reporters to come on in a week or two and talk with us about press releases, best practices, what grabs their attention, what doesn't, how do we increase our chances of a press release being printed, and how do they want them sent? I think I told you guys last week, when I worked at the newspaper, we were actually being told that press releases should be sent in the body of an email as opposed to an attachment. And I know from that experience, they also didn't want like JPEGs or PDFs. They want to make it easy so they can copy the information and then put it in a press release. So having said that, I want to make sure we can kind of get that cleared up once and for all so that we all know going forward with our club contests, open houses, and everything else we're doing to try and attract attention, that we put out the right press release in the right format so it has a better chance of getting picked up. Okay. Okay, great. All right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen so that way you can see what I'm looking at, and I'll talk you through some of the messaging that I've seen in the last couple of years from Toastmasters, some of it recent, some of it not. Go ahead and do that. This one is from the Debatable Club that I tried to launch a couple of years ago. It never really got off the ground. I think because at the time we had the 2016 election and people see debates as something very angry. So the club had trouble, but this was a flyer and a social post that they were putting out. So it's fairly narrow. But what it tells is this is a brand new club the name of it, which was kind of interesting, and what all you can expect from it. It's an advanced speech club. When they were going to meet and where, I don't know if they needed to list the founding members, but they did say it was a dinner meeting, where we were going to be, and then ending it with a point of you want to make your point. Some of the things I would do here, even though they listed the founding members in their emails, I would make one contact point for someone, such as the VPPRs like ourselves. If someone is putting out mail, like say Kelly, you are, then rather than listing the founders, what I probably would have done is said, for more information, contact Kelly at, and then list your club email address or your personal, but I'd probably use the club. That way you build the club's history and it stays with the club rather than yourself. That's just a personal preference that I would recommend. But that way they have a point of contact. You can give them your number if you feel comfortable with it. And that way if there's anything they need to ask questions on, then it's easier for them to reach out. As it is now with seven people, I wouldn't know where to start. And that would be the only thing I really had a question about when they started this. But that's one way of, of showing off what your club can do. This was one I captured from a different di district. They were trying to do things. I think this man is a speaker and he wrote a book. They were looking at the bronze exhibitors in the marketplace. They were at an expo and this is how they chose to state how, what they were doing. It's pretty simple, but there's no call to action on the message. So you know you can see them at the 2015 bronze exhibitors in the Toastmasters marketplace. I'm not even sure what that was and I was in Toastmasters then. I can't see Darren very well. I know he came here, I think, to speak here, if I remember correctly. He was doing something with Ampli Amplivox, Extend Your Voice With, and then I think this is his book. But no call to action as far as to, for more information, something. And every piece of information that we put out, there's got to be some kind of call to action, again, where people can get a hold of us pretty quickly and easily. 
This one was from our advanced leadership club, our speech club out in the West Valley. And they did pretty good, I think. They told what you were going to be doing and what to expect with which club and what we were going to be doing. I'm not sure the brain working out was, was cool, but it's a graphic that helps people remember what you're putting out the message for. It's like a reticular activator. It kind of cements the message in their mind so that way they know what to expect and they remember how they found the message and what it's about. They told us it was a three-hour meeting right up front. They told us what we'd be dealing with when they even gave a map, which was really cool. That admission was free, water provided, but there's, again, no for more information. And I would like to encourage everyone, rather than just putting out a message, they should know how to get a hold of you, but let's not make it hard for them to figure out how to get a hold of us. Go ahead and give them your contact, at least your email information. And that way, again, they have an easier way to get hold of you. At this point, I don't even know. I'd have to go look them up on the Google search. I'd have to hopefully get to the website. And the first thing I'll run into is the Toastmasters website. If I'm smart enough and techy enough, I might be able to find the link to the website, click that, and go find the leaders. If people have to do that much work to find out who to contact, they're likely not going to do it. And that decreases our chances of trying to convert someone who sees the message into becoming a guest and come in our door. We want to make this as easy for them as possible. Now, this one we did a year or two ago just to play around with it and see what we could do. I actually saw this on Instagram and thought I'd try to copy it. But again, even I failed. This is my home club. And did I have down here for more information? No. So I failed. I'm sorry. <laughs> but again, it shows very simply. This is a Toastmasters meeting. Here's my club. We want you to join us the day and time where and what classroom we're in. But I should have put down here for more information or directions, call or email, and then put down the BPPR information. But that gives you an idea of some of the messaging that's out there that we can create, whether you're using Publisher, PowerPoint, or Photoshop, or anything, how we're going to get that message out there and what it should say. Ideally, messages should answer several questions. You should tell them up front what to expect, but also have a catchy headline so that way they'll remember it. Uh, Cultivating Leaders, for example, and I can share that real quick. They didn't really have a catchy headline. This is their flyer. They have a uh, spooky open house coming up next Thursday. So they created this graphic. So you already know, here's the cult, the cult, <laughs> the club name. And you already know it's going to have something to do with Halloween or something to dress up in. Small Halloween themed. It's an open house. The date the time, where, and what Cultivating Leaders does. The one I like at the bottom, for more information, contact Carl. That is perfect. That way, again, if people have questions, they can either RSVP or they can find out, are they supposed to dress up as guests? Can they bring a friend? Do I need to bring anything? What's this all about? They can ask questions and then Carl can test the room to see who's interested and can I put you down on the guest list so they can give that to the vice president of membership and they know that to expect them. Okay, so that, that was something interesting that I thought was cool. When you're doing this also, keep in mind our branding guidelines. Toastmasters International, I think all of you have the 18 page visual basics that Toastmasters sent out and I think I sent that to everyone. Did you get that? If not, let me know, email me and I'll send it to you again. Can you share one what? Uh, David, yes. I don't know what, but yes. <laughs> um, one that we created for our club. Absolutely. I'd love to see it. We have a small group today, so and this is being recorded. So, yeah, let's have some sh stuff here. Let's see what's going on. Can you see it? I do. From pen to podium? Yes. Great. I love the fact that it's in like a little book that tells you again from pen to podium, you're going to write something down to take it to a podium, obviously, for speaking. I like that. So your story begins here. Yep. Communicate, lead. And what I like here too, David, you've got Toastmasters in a bold font. 
communicate, lead, success, all those action words are not just bolded. They're also in a color that stands out and grabs my attention. I like that. That looks really good. You know where the club is going to be meeting, when, and for any questions to contact Christy. This is good. I really like that. Now, let me ask a question. Is this a flyer that you're handing out to people? Yes, this is a flyer that we hand out, that, uh, and we give it to our club members to hand out to people. Okay, wonderful. Is it available as a JPEG where they could email it to someone if they didn't see them, but they knew they might be interested? Uh, it's available as a PDF. We could make a JPEG. But... Okay, and the reason I ask a JPEG is I like the PDFs better myself, given what I do, but a JPEG will work well on Facebook because you can't put a PDF on Facebook. Right. So if you wanted to post that on your Facebook page or group page or on the District 3 Toastmasters Facebook group page, it works better as a JPEG to do that. I like that. That is great. Angela, Kelly, do either of you have one you'd like to share? I do not have one as of yet, but I will soon. Okay, great, Kelly. I look forward to looking at that. <laughs> Angela, how about you? <laughs> Hi, I could share one. This is Angel. Okay. Hi, Angel. <coughs> Wait, Angel as in? Dos, Angel as in what? Dos Linguas Toastmasters? No, I was thinking as in Angela, Angelica Delgado. Nope, Angel Okra. Ah, okay, because she also goes by Angel. But hi, it's good. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, let me see if I can find that and I'll post. I'll okay, upload. great. Um, while Angel, so how, do, do, how do I upload it or what do I do to share, show it? You just sh uh, share your screen when oh, you okay. when you move around on the on the menu. You should see a skin at the bottom and there should be a green button that says share. Oh, nice. Those lenguas spooky tales open house. Now I'm not 100% familiar with Spanish. Dos lenguas is what? Uh, two two languages. Ah, oh, love that. Yeah. Hello, hola. This is the bilingual club. Yes. Oh, cool. Love that. Dos lenguas estados Estados invitado. Cuentos. Cool. Now, with this flyer, are you looking to hit more of the Spanish-speaking audience, not so much the English-speaking audience? We're hitting both. We, either or. We, we our, our meetings are in both Spanish and English. You have the option of using either language. Oh, okay. Got it. And it's from 6 to 8.30 at the Pile Center. Oops. Mm -hmm. Hate to say it, you have one typo <laughs> right here. Where's the... The E, you have two E's in Avenue. <laughs> oh, wow. That's okay. I'm I, I read backwards when I'm proofreading. That's how I saw it. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. I like that. It's colorful. You've used the same font to explain your spooky tales on the left and on the right. You've mm -hmm. told people where it is and how they can RSVP. Mm -hmm. Well, this is good. I like that. It's well done. I like the bat in the background. That's really cool. What you might try, and this is completely up to you, mm -hmm. um, we do have a logo that Toastmasters put out that's in a ping format and also one that's Facebook friendly. Okay. A ping format takes out that white background that we see around this one. Okay. So you might try experimenting with that, and that way, especially if the bat is the color of gray that we can use when it mm -hmm. touches it. If not, I would stay with this. Or okay. move the bat down somewhere, maybe, instead. But okay. if it is that color gray that's in our manual, then I would go ahead and experiment doing that and just dropping where leaders are made. And that okay. way they have the logo with the gray okay. and just right on the bat. I think that would look cool. Okay. I'll, I'll just double-check that. that make sure it's the same RGB that's in our books. Okay. That's great. That. Good job. Thank you. <laughs> Now, with messaging, it's a lot like the press releases. We have to answer what it is and get their attention real quick. And obviously, the Spanish flyer did because I'm not very familiar with Spanish. I took three years of it in high school. I'm not going to tell you how many years ago that was. It just that I don't remember that much of it. So it got my attention. I would ask for questions. Uh, the only thing I might put on there is maybe an email or a phone number if you're comfortable with it. So that way, if someone gets a hold of it that doesn't speak Spanish and wants mm -hmm. to know a little bit more, then they can get a hold of you, Angel. Okay. All right. We'll do. Um, so get, get a catchy title mm -hmm. and keep it short. I would 
put on there, again, the, the usual suspects, they have to know where the meeting is, when, how long, and then a brief explanation of what to expect and mm -hmm. tell them if it's got a theme like the Halloween themes that we've seen. Those are really cool. And then how way did they get in touch with someone in case there's more information? Now, the challenge that I have, this is a flyer. How would you make it shorter and direct them someplace else for social media? Like if you're putting this on Facebook, what would you do? I was going to put this on Facebook. Um, I might do two, split into two flyers. If I was going to split it into Facebook, um, let me share it again. Uh, if I was going to split this into two, I might make two flyers, like one and let's see, what else could I do to make it work? Yeah. For Facebook. Um, yeah, I almost have to split it into two mm -hmm. or make it smaller. I get agree. The to get the information. And what you might do, like take the little short graphic that I did for my club, but make it about those lingua spooky tales, either from the left or the right side, and then include the flyer that they can blow it bigger. So that way you catch their attention with a graphic, then they have another one that they can bring up and mm. print off, save off to their computer and whatnot. Something okay. like that. Okay, that would work. Like that. Okay. David, how about yours? Yours is extremely well done, extremely wordy for Facebook. So if you needed to make it shorter or say into a Facebook graphic that would get their attention, would you use that flyer or would you try to do something a little different? We actually have a different uh, post for Facebook. Let's see if okay. I can would you like to share it? Yeah, let's see if I can find it. Okay, cool. <laughs> And then at one point, probably in about two or three weeks, we'll do a little deeper dive into Facebook. Some clubs may or may not be able to afford to do an ad, but the only people that can are the ones that have a Facebook fan page. So we'll get into that. And I'm going to try and bring in one of the experts from Tucson, since he's real good at that, and let him speak from his experience how to get an ad started if your club decides to do that. While David's looking, Kelly, Angel, do either of you have questions so far? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. How how often do the centers um, have the open houses? Is, because right now we're pretty full to capacity. So we're not really, I was thinking of after the holidays do an open house, but... You can. Uh, there, there have been a couple of clubs in the Agave Division that actually did one a month, and one of them was a corporate club. For whatever reason, they did one once a month, but they grew their membership. I think it depends on the audience, on your location, and what your location can support, and also what your team can support. So if you're looking for more members and say you aren't just there yet, then you might consider doing one either one a quarter or try one a month and see what that looks like. Okay. I think I'll try one a quarter because we're at our maximum right now. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. Now, this is from Pen to Podium Toastmasters. So this is our Facebook background. It's not the actual flyer, but it's our Facebook background. That's also that, that big image. That they call that the timeline image for your page? Right. Right. And ladies, I'm not sure if you're familiar, but this would be the big one that you see when you go to a page. You've got a great big image that comes up over the top, and that's what this is. So I love the podium, especially since most clubs have a lectern. That's, that's really cool. <laughs> Leaders are made. Join or visit our club. Where, when, got it. I like that. That's very succinct and to the point. And as people visit their page, and hopefully you did a second one, for your website too, people will then see what's going on and what they can expect from there. So that's good. That's a great reminder. I don't see the flyer, uh, so I, I'll have to look for that later. But Okay. That's fine. This is really good. I like that, though. What do you think, ladies? Yeah, I think it looks really nice. The coloring is blue is always great. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now, what I can do also is include a couple of sizes for, like, Instagram, Facebook, those, I think, are the two popular ones most of our people are on. And send those sizes to you so that way you can make your own images for your club if you have an event page or a group or 
a fan page. And that way you can experiment with some stuff and see what goes on. From our club, when we were gathering an audience, we didn't really do a lot of flyers. My club is a home community club, and it used to be closed just to realtors. So with me walking in the door three months after they decided to be open, I wanted to try experimenting different things. And the one thing that I think got the public's attention, other than our meetup page when I paid for it, was posting live from the meeting. And I don't mean like Facebook Live, just pictures and posting while the meeting was going on. It kind of betrays the effort of you need to pay attention and do some listening for evaluation. But I was trying to show people, here's what's going on right now. And we ended up getting anywhere from two to three guests just from that alone, at least in a quarter. And I know from our meetup page, when we had it active before Toastmasters provided one for us, we had anywhere from three to five guests a month just from that page. So it can be done, but everybody needs to come along on that ride and do something with it. And if Facebook or Instagram aren't their forte, but they might be good, say, at Pinterest or Twitter, let them try their own thing and ask them if they need a different image or a different size and see what they can come up with to help you get the word out. Okay. Now, let's see. I had one more that I just got in. Let me share that with you guys. So they made a carousel for the, for the web for Club Pride, and they're going to have a flyer that talks about that. I actually have a PDF of that. A couple things I asked them to be careful of. I couldn't get a sample of this gray background before I finally was able to check it. Yes, it is the same color as our colors in our gray name. They're good there. This yellow, however, is not, but I wasn't really concerned with this, even though this is our blue and it touches it. I'm more concerned with what I see down here. So I'm going to ask you guys, what do you see here where the logo is? It's small. Mm -hmm. It's small. I'm not sure I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not sure I'm in, against that, but it is small. That would be a good thing. We probably do need to do something different. What else do you see? I don't know. The colors look the same to me. Like, I don't know if... They actually aren't. You know, if you were to take your photo tool, whatever that is, and try and get a sample of this, it's actually darker, which is okay to a point, but we don't want to make it too dark. Mm -hmm. And the only reason I'm okay with it is that the, the logo for Toastmasters isn't near it. Kelly, what did you see? I was just saying that I think it's small and I, I wasn't sure about like the, the actual logo of the Toastmaster. Mm. Do, you, do you think there's something wrong with that? Is it, is that what you're talking about or are you talking about the, the banner? Not necessarily. It actually is around the logo. And to your point, if I make it a little bigger, then I could do something with my words in here. Angel, did you see anything? Um... Now, this is going where? I guess I missed that part. This will go on the website for District 3. It's. The, I wonder if I should just go where the, uh, the little lion is. Okay, what do you see with the lion? It's their name, probably Club Pride. From my newspaper days, what I would probably do is flip these two because the line is looking off into the wild blue yonder. I'd rather have the line look at District 3 Toastmasters. Yeah. So if you flip them, that puts the line over here, but the main part, District 3, here. And typically, it's on a newspaper anyway, people tend to read in an S shape. So you start with something more important here and then kind of curve it, which is what okay. this does. But if anything else, if you didn't want to move this around, then I'd move the line and just flip him around so that way he's looking into the District 3 Toastmasters. Yes, you always have a figure facing the words. I didn't even catch that. I was like more looking at the coloring in that. Yeah, okay. Right. The last thing <laughs> I saw, back to the logo, look how tight the lettering is right up against the logo. And as you remember, if you remember back to our manuals that we received from Toastmasters International, we've got to have some kind of white space, maybe not necessarily on the band because I'm okay with it, but definitely around text. 
And the last thing I saw was this poor little word all by itself. My goodness, they didn't love that word. That's called an orphan. (laughs) And what I gave him a suggestion to do is to try and tighten all their text up so the orphan comes up here and then to try and make some space around the logo so that way the text isn't sitting right on top of it. And likewise, the 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 you you're tight that that dotted line. The wording is tight around that line. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you wanted to have some extra space. And I don't know this font seems kind of small to me, but that could just be because of what I'm looking at. It might be, and that's another thing. When you're looking at your messaging, think about where it's going. This will go on our website in that rotating carousel that we have. And some of the images we've had there in the past, they've had so much information in there, it's hard to read. And for whatever reason, I can't right-click on that image and save it to my desktop. So I'm forced to try and read it from the carousel, and it's almost impossible. So keep your medium at mind as well. If you know it's going to be in a small area, and to your point, Angel, it may be further away and smaller than what we're seeing here in this demonstration, then maybe do a couple of bullet points for more information, call or email this person and then say it's coming soon or say it kicks off January and I'm coming soon. It just kicks off January 1st, 2019. And that way people can get a hold of you to find out what's going on with it. What do I need to do? So that's an excellent point. Not right now that I can think of. I'll write some down though for you. (laughs) Okay, great. And I would, in prep for having the reporters on, think of one question you'd like to have asked of the reporters when we talk about press releases. And that way we can do, if we have more than one, we can do kind of like a round robin question session, whatnot. Let me know what those are and I'll send those to them ahead of time so they'll know what they're getting themselves into. And to the point when we get them on, I'm going to invite them to go to a Toastmasters Club meeting. I I was going to ask, so with the press release, are we asking for District 3 or all of the Toastmasters? We can promote groups, you know, individual groups and like try to discuss achievements, why Toastmasters is so great. It's actually more for promoting your club, not necessarily for okay. the regular meeting, but say you have a member that's just achieved their distinguished Toastmaster designation. That would be worth a press release. If you have a new leadership that comes in, say you have a club that changes leadership every six months instead of once a year, that would be a press release. The open house would be a press release. So things that are going on that are not a normal regular meeting would be part of a press release. Okay. Even the contest um, when we're doing our contest for the new year? Yes, absolutely. Your speech right. contests are definitely worth a press release. Now, again, they may not always print, but without getting the information in front of them, I can guarantee it won't print. So at least this okay. will stand a chance for it. And then, as always, in your email, invite that reporter to come into the meeting or come see the contest. Any other questions? All right, if not, I'll end a little early. What I would like to do next week, if you guys are up for it, is to take a dive into a webinar for canva.com. It's C-A-N as in Nancy, V-A, so Victor Apple, dot com. It's a browser-based graphic program that lets you design anything for social media, for a flyer, just about anything you can think of. And if the size isn't what you need, you can create a custom size. But the part I like, other than the fact it's in the browser, it lets you save it as a PDF so you can download it, put it on your flash drive, and take it somewhere to get printed. Or you can save it as a JPEG for social media posts. And they do have templates for social media posts as well. I find it to be a really robust program. It's a little difficult to do, to deal with. And I'll show you something to play with it. But I think it's something that will benefit all of District 3 if we can get approval from District 3 to have them bear the cost for it. Yeah. Um, I use Canva to make the, the uh, flyer for our club. Oh, wonderful. Yeah, the one I'm about to show you, I did too. It is free, and that's okay. one of the reasons I want, I would like everyone to try and use it. The biggest reason is I want to have the paid version so that way we can upload free versions of the fonts that Toastmasters International has approved and some of our intellectual property from Toastmasters, like approved photos, approved images. 
that makes it easier for people then to use but only if we get all on it together and the pricing I'm asking them for is to give us a quote for more than 30 people. So at 30 people, they cut it off. And I think that's just horrible. I want to have it for like 200. So this is our ad that's going to go into our small business expo guide. That's, and this is an expo that we're actually taking part in at the end of the month. And I created this in Canva. So you have again, the picture of our three leaders our header that was pre-approved by Toastmasters. So the next leadership team can just pick this right up and use it and keep branding our international, our, our district here. The text, Toastmasters or leaders are made and how they can contact us. So the only thing they may have to change is the booth number. Otherwise, this is good to go. And the biggest reason I did it in Canva was so that the next person in this position can make changes without having to recreate the wheel. Okay. If you have to recreate something, that's just a waste of time. I would rather have them just pick it up and go. So, but that that's what I ended up doing. And I'm waiting for one more approval and I can send it in. <laughs> great. Yeah, it looks good. All right, great. Well, thank you guys for joining. I appreciate your time. And I will see you next week at seven o'clock with a deep dive on okay. camera.